Hi, the Orange Pi RK3399 is yet another board to join the ranks of the rock chip based SPCs. In true Orange Pi fashion, they give you everything, but is this SPC worth it? This video is being sponsored by JLC PCB, who provide all my PCBs. They can produce one to six layer boards from 0.4 to two millimeters thickness, track widths down to 3.5 mil, VO drill sizes down to 0.2 millimeters, and can handle BGAs, controlled impedance, cutouts, gold fingers, and even offer a panelization service. For only $2, you can get 10 PCBs manufactured in 24 hours. And if you haven't used them before, don't forget to claim your $20 shipping coupon off your first order. Click on the link in the description below to check them out. Occasionally I'll be given an SBC for review, but like most of my reviews, I purchased this one. If you saw my previous mailbag video, you would have seen how Orange Pie shipped this board. Even though it was securely wrapped, I would have expected a bit more effort into packaging. But anyway. You can see that a heck of a lot has been broken out from the rock chip sock, more than any other SPC on the market. So what does this little baby give you, starting from the top right, working clockwise? The first of two MIPI CSI interfaces. Move your finger, you bozo. Two MIPI LCD interfaces. A couple of buttons to mash, which in the documentation have been assigned menu, return, volume down, and volume up. Speaker output. Mic, IR receiver, audio in and out jack, SD slot, four USB 2.0 ports, recovery button, debug serial, 12 volt 2 amp DC jack, nice, external battery connector, reset button, uh, yeah, move your thumb, thanks, loosely compatible Pi header, gigabit ethernet, USB type C, even better, SPDIF out, HDMI out, and something that we've all been waiting for, HDMI input. Also MSATA, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectors, 5 volt 2 amp power header, and a 12 volt 2 amp one. On the semi side we have one of many logic level converters converting the SOX 1.8 volts to 3 volts for the LCD interface. DC boost converter providing power for the GPU, Hall effect sensor, ALC5651 audio codec, 500 milliamp LDO regulator providing 3 volts from the 3.3 volt supply, 12 megahertz crystal for the USB type C power control IC which is underneath, DC power fuse, and low loss power distribution switch, a bunch of MOSFETs, uh, even more MOSFETs, and more. BQ25700 Multi Chemistry Charge Control IC. Yet more MOSFETs. And a CW2015 Battery Fuel Gauge. More DC buck converters providing 5 volts and also 3.3 volts. RTL8211E Gigabit Ethernet Controller. And the all important RK808 PMIC. ESD Protection. USB Power Switch. USB Type-C Power Management IC, DC Step-Down Regulator for the CPU, more ESD protection, and this is the IC that handles the HDMI in. It converts an HDMI signal to MIPI CSI. So as you'll see later, to record HDMI, I treat it like a camera interface. USB 3.0 and SATA controller, running off a 30 megahertz crystal. On the flip side, we have under my thumb, thank you, the second MIPI CSI, and EDP interfaces. There's also a mini PCIe slot, and a SIM card. As for the ICs, we have the USB 2.0 hub, a PT5305N, which I suspect is an op-amp, LSM6D53 gyroscope, and an MPU650 gyro and accelerometer. Why not? Light sensor, and a 5 channel differential multiplexer switch from TI. And SMD pads for a 512 kilobit SPI flash. And then there's a bunch more MOSFETs and power switches. The Orange Pi user guide tells me that I can power this thing from either the 12 volt DC jack, 
12 volt header, 5 volt header, USB type C or batteries. I would have liked to have tested out running this thing on batteries, but unfortunately they didn't arrive in time. The SPC comes pre-installed with Android 6 on the eMMC, so I thought I'd check that out first. And since I needed to keep things properly cool, I used my Uber heatsink during my performance tests. Booting into Android was quick enough, and I was greeted with a friendly reminder to contact my manufacturer because there was an internal problem somewhere. Uh, okay. Apart from that, everything seemed okay. I could see Wi-Fi access points. I managed to get an IP address via Ethernet. I was running on 1080p at 60 hertz and could see the battery stats and internal memory. It was running a pretty old Android version with kernel 4.4, but alas, no Google Play Store installed. I thought I'd dive straight into testing out the HDMI input to see if it would work, but, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It just didn't really want to play ball. Okay, so what about video playback speeds? Okay. What about uh, 4K video tests? <laughs> yeah, well, this is going well so far. Let's try Wi-Fi access. Seems to find my phone's access point, but I never could connect to any of my access points. Yeah, well, that's pretty hopeless. Ethernet seems to be having issues as well and would constantly hang, which is probably the reason for the YouTube video tests failing. Orange Pi have provided a mechanism to install APKs onto Android, so I downloaded Google Play onto a USB flash drive and tried to install. It was looking good for a while, but then... <laughs> yeah, righto. Okay, let's move on to Linux tests. Installing Linux is easy enough. It's identical to all the other RK3399 based SPCs. Download the Linux upgrade tool and the Orange Pi Debian image. If you get errors like this, then you'll need to install the 32-bit library versions on your 64-bit OS. That's really all par for the course. Then start the upgrade tool. Press and hold the recovery button while you power up the board via the USB Type-C. Rescan to detect the board. And upload the firmware image that you... Oh. Okay. Another way of booting a different OS is to burn that same image to SD card. Then you'll need to connect two test pads together, which you can do using some tweezers, and then power up the board from the DC jack. Leave the tweezers there for a random amount of time, and then release. You should then be booting up into a Linux desktop from the SD card. So simple. Since the HDMI recording failed dismally, I need to see if it actually does work under Linux. It has four video interfaces, looking good. And using FFmpeg, I can see that video 0 and video 2 supports video recording. Nice. But strangely, there were some aspects missing from the driver. So I plugged in my notebook HDMI out to the Orange Pi HDMI in and played a random video I found somewhere on YouTube. I first tried to record using GStreamer and had some mixed results. Doing real-time AVI encoding at 60 frames per second and then at 30 frames per second. Then raw recording and transcoding later. Unfortunately, it generates 1.6 gigs in eight seconds and you can see that even writing to RAM disk, the board was struggling to keep up. So then I switched over to using FFmpeg with hardware encoding. And ended up with this being the best results so far. But even then, it was a little stuttery at times. So yes, with a bit of fiddling around, you can actually record HDMI video. It's about the only good thing going for this board so far. So before I move on to Arbion tests, I thought I'd check out what GPIOs the Orange guys had enabled. There's four I2C buses enabled out of the eight, with a bunch of devices visible on each of them. Unfortunately, the schematics were wrong and the actual I2C addresses were way off. 
I'll post these to my website, so check it out there. Alas, no SPI, that's really to be expected. But we do have frequency scaling control and access to the PMIC and voltage regulators. Okay, so moving on. Time for the latest Arbion nightly build. Uh, okay, doesn't seem to have any HDMI output. But looking on the Arbion forums, it seems that that part hasn't been sorted out yet. But it does connect to the network and you can log in in the usual way. The Ambient guys have created a really nice tool that allows you to copy the running root file system over to either EMMC or SD card, depending on which one you didn't boot from. This is actually really handy and saves a lot of fiddling around with tweezers and jumpers. So what about GPIOs from Arbion? We have five ITC buses enabled out of the eight with a similar lineup to the Lenaro OS. Bus 1 saw the HDMI to MIPI CSI IC vanish on Arbion, so I don't expect HDMI in to be working. Bus 2 isn't really an ITC bus and doesn't have any pull-ups, so it didn't really scan properly. And the rest of the buses remained pretty much the same. I was hoping my MIPI CSI camera would be working, but unfortunately I couldn't see it on any of the ITC buses. And yep, SPI is a no-show again. Running the Arbion 7-zip benchmark came up with a result similar to everyone else on the Arbion forums. One of the really annoying things was the Gigabit Ethernet driver. I saw problems with all three operating systems, and even when dropping down to 100 megabit half duplex, I'd still see the NIC drop off the network entirely. So on to start a testing. This will be good. I used a fairly recent but bog standard 1 terabyte SATA disk. Note that the SATA interface is not hot swap, so you will have to power off and on again to see the disk. I then ran a bunch of IO zone tests for a couple of hours using Pharonix. Since the hard disk is attached to a plain old USB 3.0 to SATA bridge, the results were pretty much as expected. The Orange Pi sat around the ROC64, Nano PCT4, Tinkerboard and Pi 3s for 64 kilobyte block read performance. Write performance matched the Espresso bin, but really this is all dependent on the type of disk used, so it's only a rough idea of performance. I'm thinking of running a comparison video across all SBCs that are SATA capable, so leave a comment below if you'd like to see it. Unfortunately, my power logger seemed to stop recording current draw for some reason, so I can't really see what the current draw was like. But while running Arbion and sitting idle, I saw the SOC temperature sit around 31 degrees Celsius. During the Pharonix tests, I saw a max of 52 with an average of 32. This is all pretty similar to other RK3399 based SOCs, so no surprise there. So what do I think of the Orange Pi RK3399? Well, it's not as polished as some of the other rock chip based SBCs, like the Nano Pi Neo 4, for example. Even though it's a fairly stock standard design, the software side is quite flaky. Not having a workable Android OS is a bit of an issue. Documentation is fairly complete, but there are a lot of errors. So trying to track down components takes a while. On the plus side, you can actually record from HDMI. This makes it the only SPC on the market capable of doing so. The video does occasionally stutter, even with hardware encoding, but I can see this only improving over time. The HDMI input doesn't support HDCP, but the Toshiba device does allow for it. I'm gathering that this would cost a fair amount to implement, as licensing costs would go through the roof for the orange guys, and make this board a whole lot more expensive. Several other pluses, it's one of the only SBCs to push out a lot of the rock chip GPIOs, a lot more than other SBCs, and we've got battery management, but I haven't tested this yet. So a bit of a mixed bag, definitely not an SBC for a beginner, possibly workable for a novice, so it's really a board for a hacker at the moment. So that's about it, thanks for watching, and see you next week.